Hi, this is Adam from Ads Productions and I'm back with another video. This video is going to show you a quick and simple way to sort out any issues that you're having with your network or your internet connection. Here we go. The first thing you should look at in terms of network connection issues is how fast your internet connection is at the current time you're experiencing problems. The reason I say this is because you could have been sold a 20 meg second connection but only be getting 6 or 7 like you can see on the screen. Now, my internet isn't great from the get-go, so don't use this as a comparative figure, but just something to look out for. Also, a quick thing I like to do whenever I'm having issues is just enable aeroplane mode on and off again. This pretty much resets your connection and reconnects yourself to the wireless hotspot that you were originally connected to. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. It's worth a try. If everything looks okay to you, go and find the router in your house. This is normally a small box with green flashing lights normally located where the network comes into your house. You can use these green flashing lights as a sort of diagnostics tool. Find the manual for your router or router, and then see if they should be A flashing, or B steady, or even on at all. This will give you a good indication if anything is wrong. So for example, a lot of the time a steady light means that there is a connection, however there's no data or data going through it. It's always good to check the manual, and we'll go from there. The next stage is take everything out of the back of the router or router and plug it back in again, making sure everything is connected completely. Because sometimes these little connections can be hanging out a little bit and you won't really know until you actually try and re-plug them back in. So there's me demonstrating just taking them all out and plugging them all back in exactly where you got them from. Included with all the cables that you should be removing and plugging back in is the power cable. Yep, so you'll clear off the power to the router or router. Make sure you tell everyone before you do this in your house because you don't want to get those, uh, who's turned the internet off? Oh, sorry, that was me. We've all been there. If you still find that you can't get on the internet for whatever reason on your machine, but there is someone in your house that has internet that is working, go over to that PC, take the cable that's going into that PC, take it out of that original PC and plug it in your PC to see if you get at least internet using their configuration. If you do find using somebody else's network cable in your PC does get it to work, I would then check the network cable you're using in yours originally, as more often than not, these network cables can break and stop packets being sent through and therefore giving you a bad network experience. The next thing I would recommend doing is updating your drivers of your network card. So open up Device Manager on your PC and go down to Network Devices Right click on the adapters and click update driver software. Now obviously if you don't have internet you won't be able to search the internet for drivers. So what I would suggest in that case is search on Google the model number of your PC followed by network drivers. Loads of results will come up. Click it, download it, run it. You should be good to go with updating your drivers. Now just backtracking slightly, if you're if other people in your house or your building can get on the internet but your PC can't, it might be worth checking out your DNS settings and changing them to Google's public facing DNS just for troubleshooting purposes. To do this, go to Control Panel, Network and Sharing Center, and then go to Change Adapter Settings. Select the network adapter that you're using, in my case it's the wireless, right click, go to Properties, Scroll down to where it says IPv4, click on it, click on Properties, and click on the Use the following DNS address. So in the preferred address you want to type 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8, that's four eights, and then in, in the alternative type in 8.8.4.4. .4 click OK, then close that all off. Wait for about five minutes, then try to go to another website and see if you notice any difference. Okay, getting slightly more technical now, even though it's not really anything technical at all. Open up command prompt using CMD, drag it down. We're gonna ping a website just to make sure that your PC can reach the internet through your router or router. So type in PING space an address. So we're gonna use Google 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. When you press enter, it will then return, or at least should, four responses. So there we've got an example of a successful ping. So what we can do if we type the same thing again, 
ping 8.8.8.8-t, that will constantly run a ping until you say so. So you can leave this open if you really want to and see for the whole day if you've got any issues. So there we can see a request timed out. That means my PC trying to reach Google through my router or router timed out, which would indicate a connection problem between the gateway and the internet. So this is something you can use and explain to your ISP if you ever call them on the phone. This would also explain dropouts, disconnections and general slowness in terms of applications and things like that. So it's very important that you don't see anything like request timed out, request cancelled, no response, anything like that. You just want to see replies. You don't want to see timeouts or disconnects. Just like we pinged Google, we're now going to ping our router or gateway. So let's open up CMD again. Now we'll type in ipconfig. This will display our default gateway, as you can see there, 192.168.1.1. That's our router or router. So let's type in ping space 192.168.1.1. And we'll do dash t again, just so we can see a whole list. Now we're sending ping requests to our gateway. If we see any timeouts here, that means from our PC to our gateway, not going out to the internet, just the communication between the PC and the gateway. If we see any disconnects, we've got a big problem with the hardware, in my opinion. Every time I've seen a timeout on a router or a gateway from a direct ping to it, that's meant there's been a hardware issue. As with everything, there are exceptions to this rule. However, if you're having issues pinging the gateway directly, this will more than likely indicate a hardware issue. I like to have a Google ping and a gateway ping going on at the same time while I look at other issues on the network. This gives me almost a live view of the connections as they happen. However, there's another way to do this that's more efficient in my opinion. You can actually save these ping results to notepad files for you to then send to maybe a client or even your parents just to tell them what's going on this will also help with troubleshooting with your ISP if you have to go down that path. Okay, to save the ping results as a text file, just open up another command prompt. Type in the ping that you're trying to do, so in this case ping 8.8.8.8. .8 then you want to do two of these symbols that you can see. Then C with the path where you want to save it, so in my case I'm going to save it under users, then Adam being my name, then desktop, then we're going to call it Google ping just let it catch up with the video there you go so google ping.txt and then we're going to add the dash t on the end so now what this command has done is it will constantly ping google the the 8.8.8.8 uh, .8 into a text file saved on my desktop and this is going to constantly update this text file as you can see there we've got google ping.txt and we have it saved on the desktop it's it's running those pings constantly so if i open this up now you'll be able to see every single ping to the Google IP address logged in the notepad file, including, interestingly enough, a request timeout. This keeps a direct log of all your ping results. You can then use this log file to show to either your ISP, your IT guy, your parents or whoever, just to prove with solid evidence that you are having dropouts. If you're on the phone to your ISP trying to sort your internet out, and you mention the fact that you've pinged your gateway and Google and have a ping plot test saved as a notepad file, they're more likely to take you seriously than just your average caller. Just FYI. So you've ran a series of ping tests, you've turned the router or router on and off again, you've taken all the plugs out of your PC and the gateway, you can't see anything wrong online about this, you've changed your DNS, you've updated all the drivers you can think of, you've ran the Windows updates, still nothing. You're panicking now because you can't get on the internet. The one thing I'll do just to try and get you online in some form is get out your mobile phone, go to settings and enable your mobile hotspot. Although this will probably cost you a fortune in terms of data, I'd just recommend doing this just to send off that last important email or just save what you were doing on the website or whatever. Just get a hotspot going, get yourself connected, give your ISP a call, let them know everything that you've done, every little detail in terms of troubleshooting, because that will save you a lot of time on the phone, because they're more than likely going to talk you through doing a similar process that I've just explained to you. If you have any further issues with your network, 
they should be able to help you out because anything else will more than likely be an infrastructure issue that they deal with, e.g. send people to your house to fix your line, etc, etc. If you found any of this info in this video useful, and even if you fixed anything using this info, please let me know, I'll be really fascinated to hear your stories. Thank you very much for watching, this has been Adam from Ads Productions with another video regarding network connectivity and what you can try and do to get yourself up and running. Thanks for watching.